So we looked at adding and subtracting fractions yesterday. We're going to look just at mixed numbers today. And so first of all, you might have learned some things about mixed numbers. You probably were introduced to them in fifth and sixth grade. I would hope so at least. One thing that, that this is one thing that I teach a little different than other math teachers. Um, and it's for a reason because what I have seen over the years is the short few years that I've taught is that some teachers teach mixed numbers that if you're adding, you do it this way. If you're subtracting, you do mixed numbers this way. If you're multiplying and dividing, you do mixed numbers this way. And then if you have a negative, you've got to do this, and it's a little different. And so students have three or four different ways that they try to remember how to do mixed numbers. But the way that I teach it, you do the same thing no matter what operation you're doing. And so it's a, it might be a little extra work than what you're used to, but if you can remember these steps that we're about to write down, then for any time you see a mixed number, you always do this, and it's going to work. Um, and so that's why we're going to look at it this way. So the steps that I want you to do today. Number one, as soon as you see a mixed number and a problem, it does not matter if you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. The first thing that I want you to do is change all the mixed numbers to improper fractions. Change all mixed numbers to improper fractions. And then we're going to do the same three steps we did yesterday. Get a common denominator, add or subtract the numerators, simplify your answer if you need to. And remember, simplify could mean either reduce it by dividing them by the same thing or change your mixed number or change your improper fraction back to a mixed number. But this step one, doesn't matter what operation we're using, always do this whenever you see a mixed number. Change it to an improper fraction. And like I said, I know some of you all might have learned to do mixed numbers different, but especially now that we're throwing in negatives with them, it's just the best practice to go ahead and change it to an improper fraction first. And that way, every time you see one, doesn't matter what operation you're doing, it's going to be the same first step. You just have to remember one thing. And other than this, most of today's um, work is just going to be looking at some examples, talking about different things with them. And so let's look at our first example here. So 7 and 4 ninths plus 10 and 5 eighths. So the way that you change an, a mixed number to an improper fraction, you take the whole number, Multiply it by the denominators. We're going to do 7 times 9. So 7 times 9 gets us 63. And then we're going to take that 63 and add the numerator. So we do 63 plus 4, which would be 67. And the denominator always stays the same. So 7 and 4 ninths as an improper fraction is 67 over 9. We'll do the same thing to this 10 and 5 eighths. 10 times 8, which is 80, and then 80 plus 5 would be 85 over 8. Now this is where mixed numbers take a little longer because we're going to have some bigger numbers. It stinks because what's the only denominator that's going to work for 9 and 8? 72. So we're going to have to do this fraction times 8, this fraction times 9. So we'll make it go by a little quicker. You guys do 85 times 9. I'll do 67 times 8.
So 85 times 9 is going to get us 765, yep, 765. So 536 over 72 plus 765 over 72. Same denominator, so now I just add the numerators. 536 plus 765. You got it? What is it? 1,301 over 72. All right, so now we've got to change this back to a mixed number. And this is why I like this problem, because it's easy to show you the best way to do this. We're going to divide 1,301 by 72, okay? So first thing, on a fraction, the top number is always going to go on the inside. The top number always goes on the inside. And so we're going to divide this, and we're going to use the answer as well as the remainder to make our mixed number. So 7 goes into 130, or 72, sorry, goes into 130 just once. And we subtract 72 from 130. Which is going to be 58. And then drop your 1 to get 581. Okay, any ideas, guesses on how many times 72 will go into 581? Six times? Yeah, let's try six, see what we get. 72 times 6. It's 432, so try 7, someone try 7, someone try 8. We'll see what happens. 8 is 586. 8 is 586. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, sure. 576. Yeah. So eight's going to work, actually. And we already know that 72 times eight is 576. So we are left with five. So remember back to when you were doing long division in elementary school and you would put 18 remainder five as your answer? Okay, this time we're going to put as our mixed number 18 and instead of putting remainder 5, it's going to be 5 over, the denominator is going to stay the same, 72. Because there were 5 left over out of the 72 that we were dividing. So when we divide like that to get our answer as a mixed number, the top part here, 18, is our whole number. The remainder goes on top. The denominator stays the same. So our mixed number would be 18 and 5 over 72. Okay? So let's look at our next example. This one won't take as long. However, we've got to change a couple of things. And we'll do that here in a second. Let's first make these improper fractions. Okay? So 3 times 4 would be 12. 12 plus 1 would give us 13 over 4. Minus negative... 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 would be 7 over 4. Now that we got our improper fraction, the next step would be to get a common denominator. Do we need to get a common denominator here? No, because no, they're both already 4. So skip that step. Now let's change our subtraction sign to addition. Change our negative 7 fourths to a positive 7 fourths. So really, we're just going to add 13 plus 7 to get 20 over 4. So what I would do with numbers like this is ask yourself, can I divide 20 and 4 by the same number? Yeah. Yes. yes, by what? 
Four. By four, yeah. 20 divided by four would be five over one. And if it was five over one, we could just write it as five. Another thing that I, if you were to go ahead and make this a mixed number, if you were to make this a mixed number, you would have gotten five and zero over four. Anytime you have a mixed number and you have a remainder of zero here, you can just write the whole number as five. You don't have to put zero over four, okay? So any questions with mixed numbers so far? So change to improper fractions, get a common denominator, and then we're just doing what we did yesterday, basically. So go ahead and do those next two on your own. Go ahead and do the next two on your own. First of all, 16, anybody have an idea of what we should do with that? Chris? Um, yes, write it as 16 over one. Then change five and five six to an improper fraction and get a common denominator. So just put that 16 over one and then work with that.
Okay, so on our first one, we're going to change to improper. So 16 over 1 is already an improper fraction, minus 35 over 6. This common denominator is not that bad because you just got to change this to a 6. Multiply 16 and 1 by 6. So that's going to become 96 over 6 minus 35 over 6. 96 minus 35 would get us 61 over 6. And then 61 over 6, if we go ahead and make that into a mixed number, we're going to end up getting 10 and 1 sixth as our answer. 10 and 1 sixth. Second one, we change these two to improper fractions. We've got negative 49 over 8 plus 23 over 10. Common denominator for 8 and 10, what would work? 80 would work. Is there something smaller than 80 that would work? 40 would work as well. Now, if you did 80, you would just have to divide once by 2 after you're done. Because that will reduce everything. We'll go ahead and do with 40. So 8 times 5 and 49 times 5. And then 23 times 8, or sorry, times 4. 10 times 4. So 49 times 5 would get us 245. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, 245. So negative 245 over 40 plus 23 times 4 would be 96 over 40. You're right, it is 92 over 40. If one is negative and one's positive, what are we going to do with the 245 and 92? Add or subtract. You know? yeah. Subtract them. So you're going to do 245 minus 92. And you get 153. Is it going to be positive or negative 153? Negative 153, because that negative 245 is the bigger number. So, negative 153 over 40. Now we've got to change this into a mixed number. So if you can't figure out how many times 40 would go into 153, a little trick that usually works, put your hand over the last two numbers. How many times will 4 go into 15? Three times, right? Three times. So it's going to be negative three. And then 40 times three is 120. So then take 153, subtract 120, and see what you're left with. 33. So it'll be negative three and 33 over 40. Any questions? All right, for our last two with word problems, we're not going to do the entire thing. I just want us to set it up. So basically just figure out, are we going to add or are we going to subtract based off of how the question is worded? If you can figure that out, we're going to get plenty of practice with actually adding and subtracting. So it says, this urban planner is designing a skateboard park. The length of the park is 120 and a half feet. The length of the parking lot is 40 and one third feet. So they're asking how much space will they need for the entire thing? Well, if you've got the park and then the parking lot, you're trying to find how much space for the entire thing. What are you gonna do with these two numbers? Add or subtract, AJ? Add them together. So all you need to do is just write down that we're gonna add these two together. We've gotten plenty of practice and we're gonna get practice with actually doing that problem. So just know that you're gonna add those two together based off of that question. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with this last one. 
So the hybrid's car's gas tank can hold 11 and 9 tenths gallons. It contains 8 and 3 fourths gallons. How much more gasoline is needed to fill the tank? What phrase do you see that we talked about yesterday that tells you what operation to do? How much more? How much more? And that means? Subtract. Subtract. So we're going to subtract these two. 11 and 9 tenths minus 8 and 3 fourths. All right, any questions on this? No? Okay, if not, you all can get started on these questions.